Thanks for dropping in. This is my 3D printed Barrel Cooper's puzzle box. In this is my box of mistakes and mishaps that I encountered on the way to designing and building it. In this video, I'm going to discuss the design process behind coming up with this puzzle. And I'm also going to cover the many fiascos I encountered along the way. I use the term fiasco deliberately. It's an Italian word that means literally both bottle or flask, or figuratively, it could refer to a failed performance, and that has translated into English. The exact reason that bottle and failed performance would be the same word is not 100% clear, but one theory that I like is that glass blowing masters would keep their failures, their experiments that didn't quite work out, to remind them of what they had tried. And if someone were to ever ask about those misshapen glass monstrosities on the wall, they would say, oh, that, that's just a bottle. It's a philosophy I personally like, and so I tend to keep a lot of my mistakes around to learn from them. To aid further in talking about this puzzle, I made a special print that cuts off half of the puzzle and shows off the interior. Now, at first glance, this is really complicated, but I assure you that I did not come up with all of this at once. I came up with one little puzzle idea and expanded upon that and expanded upon that until I came up with something I was happy with. Generally speaking, that's how I come up with puzzles. I look for some mechanical quirk that interests me. In this case, this screw piece was the first element of this design. People are familiar with screws. They're familiar with how they look and they're familiar with how they act. So this is a perfect device to throw into a puzzle to kind of confuse the unwary solver. You would expect that a piece like this could be unscrewed, therefore freeing up some element further in the puzzle, and then be discarded and not used in any other way whatsoever. But this is not a normal screw. As I've covered in previous videos about this puzzle, this has a special track that wraps around the end and then when it gets to the bottom of the screw, it jumps and turns back around on itself. At this point in the project, the puzzle was not barrel shaped. It wasn't anything shaped. All we have is a screw traveling along a path when tweaked in a specific way could travel further down that path. It wasn't long though before I thought of the idea that part of the puzzle could perhaps rotate, changing where that path would interact and by adding the number of rotating pieces, that path could become increasingly more complex and more devious. A puzzle with rotating sections tends to lend itself to a cylinder shape. The main reason being that when the different pieces are turned, they maintain the same profile regardless of what angle they're turned at. As I started examining different paths that the screw could take throughout the puzzle, I settled on three sections. And it doesn't take a huge jump in logic to imagine a cylinder with three sections being a barrel. Of course, there are certain design elements that naturally go along with any given theme. In the case of a barrel, we have a cork and an offset hole near the front. Those elements very quickly added to the complexity and interest in the design. The cork, for example, could act as a tool to interact with the screw, rather than just have it be a finger knob, which is what I originally imagined. Finally, it was time to get to printing. This was the very first print for this project. It's done in very cheap PLA I had sitting around. In fact, I ran out of a roll, so you can see where I had to switch to another color. And it was primarily done just to get a good sense of the scale of the object that I was computer modeling. When you're building something on a computer, it's very easy to lose track of the true scale of an object. And that's why it's good, before you get too far into it, to print out something that you can hold in your hand and explore. You'll also see that the centerpiece has a huge chunky wall. It's just way too thick. There's no reason for this. You'll see that this is the last piece of the set that I printed, because at that point I had started exploring adding um, 
three-dimensional designs onto the overall shape, these stave marks. Another difference from the final design are these little pillars on the inside with little dimpled holes in them. This was, theoretically, for magnets to hold the lid of the puzzle on. I figured that a couple magnets would be enough to keep everything in place and prevent the lid from falling off from someone shaking the puzzle out. I quickly found that I was completely wrong in that regard. After a few more prints, I had a fully functioning prototype. As you can see, it still has a lot of differences from the final version. Namely, I had gone from having two magnet pillars to six. While I was printing these puzzles, I was solving them over and over again, and I quickly found that it was frustrating keeping track of where everything was rotated. So for my own sanity, I added the indicators that are on the bottom of the puzzle, and I found that they were so essential to keeping track of all the pieces that that stayed to the final design. Another issue with this version was difficulties with trying to open the top lid. The screw is only this long, so in order to push the lid up, it needs to be pushed pretty far in by hand. So far in that you actually need to use a secondary tool to keep pushing. As you can see, the bottom of this lid is flat, whereas in future versions of this puzzle, the lid itself had a pillar that entered into this hole, so you didn't have to push the screw that far before it started lifting the lid. A few more prints and things were starting to fall into place. This copy right here is nearly the same as the final release design, but it had one major flaw. It had a screw loose. It took a lot of experimenting to find the right distances and fits to get everything to flow well, but not so well that it could just be solved by tilting the puzzle. Over the course of dozens of additional prints, I found little optimizations here and there that would make the puzzle more pleasant to solve or would save in printing time and plastic. For example, this design had additional support structures that I ultimately found were unnecessary. This final version has a guardrail that prevents the main lead screw from being screwed down in anything other than one of the two valid positions. Does this make the puzzle easier to solve? Definitely. But the point isn't to make a puzzle that you can't solve. It's a puzzle that's sort of an exploration that anyone with enough time and patience will eventually be able to uncover the answer. If you plan to make your own puzzles, I encourage you to expect to go through a process like this where you will find things that will need to be tweaked and improved upon. Ultimately, you will come up with a better project in the end. Before I close out for the week, I want to introduce a new section to these videos. Many of you have made wonderful prints of the designs that I've shared either on Thingiverse or here on YouTube, and I'd like to show those to a broader audience. So, if you made prints of any of my designs and would like to share them, Send a photo of your prints to joe at 3dprinty.design, and I'll include them at the end of each video. Until next time, thanks for watching.